So thank you everyone for joining. Uh, I'm Mehdi, uh, working as a senior software engineer here at FSCode. Uh, today we'll be discussing about uh, upgrading PostgreSQL standalone instance to a high availability cluster. So let's dive in. So today we'll be discussing about uh, Postgres service in general. Then we will discuss about uh, what QTB provides uh, regarding to uh, managing PostgreSQL in a Kubernetes native way. And then we will go to today's demo. And after that, I would love to hear your question about today's session and overall QTB. So, <clears throat> PostgreSQL is a very popular object uh, relational uh, <clears throat> database management system. Uh, it is widely used for its uh, advanced uh, feature. And uh, uh, so Postgres, uh, Postgres database is uh, commonly renowned for its uh, replication. It supports uh, various replication, like the default one is streaming and the logical one. So the logical one sometimes uh, referred as the buffsub. So Postgres database also uh, allows you to do high, high availability cluster. And then Postgres, uh, there is a multi-purpose use case of uh, Postgres database mode. Uh, you can run Postgres in various modes like uh, single user mode, multiple user mode, read only mode, uh, or standby mode or archive mode. Uh, each of uh, them has a specific use case as uh, in a Single user mode, you can uh, you have to only a single user can read or read or write from the database. And uh, by default, Postgres is a multiple user mode, so multiple user for read or write. You can also uh, create a database instance uh, with uh, only read only support or in the hot standby mode. And uh, for uh, you can also allow your Postgres SQL instance in archive mode, for, which will allow you to do point in time recovery. Uh, additionally, Postgres SQL is a very advanced database. It will uh, support uh, advanced indexing, uh, indexing uh, secured, uh, securing your database with TLS management. And Postgres uh, SQL is very extensible and also asset compliant. So. Next, uh, we want to see what uh, QTB is providing regarding this uh, uh, management uh, of PostgreSQL using uh, QTB in a Kubernetes native way. So, firstly, PostgreSQL QTB allows you to do database provisioning. So, you can provision a Postgres instance in a cluster mode or a standalone mode, and QTB will allow you to do automatic failover. Uh, over the instances. So if a sudden replica instance fail or the primary fail, it should recover automatically or there should be <clears throat> some sort of primary switchover. And uh, for QTB side, uh, we have a feature uh, that you will be able to initialize the database uh, with the existing script or maybe in, uh, from a existing backup. Uh, for the replication side, uh, Postgres allowed a streaming replication, that is the uh, standard master-slave uh, architecture, the default replication of uh, Postgres SQL. And after uh, Postgres also allow a logical replication, that is the standard PubSub method. So we do have both support for, uh, we do have support for both of the replication mode uh, and uh, there, here comes the day two operation uh, with uh, QDB. So and there are certain needs of uh, to do a database upgrade of uh, something like you, you want to uh, scale your database horizontally or vertically. So we do have a, uh, we, we do have a mechanism for that. We, we call them some sort of ops request. So you will be able to do horizontal scaling, vertical scaling. Also, you'll be able to do a volume expansion. And uh, we have support for version upgrade. So you can always move, can move to an older version to a newer version. And also, QDB allows you to uh, reconfigure your TLS setup and uh, it allows you to pass custom code. Uh, custom configuration in a declarative way. 
to install kubedb uh, yeah you can you can visit our kubedb website that is kubedb.com so here is a just simple instruction you can do uh, install uh, the kubedb using simple helm command so it will install the latest version of uh, kubedb which i have already installed um, so let's uh, dive into our today's demo so today's demo was about upgrading a process sql instance to a high availability cluster with kubedb so previously we had uh, we didn't had uh, support for this feature uh, we had support for standalone uh, instance or uh, clustering instance but sometimes uh, user 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 tends to be uh, deploy a standalone database then they might they might need of uh, upgrading them to uh, them to be in a cluster mode uh, because of uh, high availability uh, so and uh, it was a highly requested feature of kubedb so we are happy to share with you guys so for today's demo, I want to go through our, our Postgres YML, how Postgres uh, is provisioned. So uh, <clears throat> if, you, if you have uh, experience with using kubedb, you may know that we maintain a custom resource uh, uh, <clears throat> that are responsible for, uh, this is the, the single YML are responsible for uh, doing all of the work that might, that might take you days to configure a standalone or a cluster instance. So, so for today's demo, we are planning to deploy a standalone instance, and then we will we will try to apply a OPS request, uh, and that will uh, that will move this standalone instance to a cluster mode. So we'll see we'll see that in action. So with that, uh, let's let's see uh, what's the in this YML. So. Uh, it's uh, it comes under the API version kubedb.com v1 alpha 2 and it's kind will be postgres so it's, uh, it's referring to our postgres crd and uh, you are just referring to the name and namespace of the instance so the instance will be named demo pg and it will be in the uh, demo namespace we are using postgres version 13.2 and uh, uh, since it's a standalone instance we are uh, uh, <laughs> we are using one replica so this is the storage spec. We are just uh, using one GB storage, and we have said that termination policy do delete. Uh, there are three different termination for policies for kubedb instances. That is, we have out, delete, and do not terminate. If you said do not terminate, that instance will not be terminated. If you said delete, uh, it will keep your secret and delete. Um, it will keep your secret and delete everything. Uh, if, here is uh, another YML. I want to go through this. Um, before that, I think uh, we could uh, we could provision in our standalone instance first. So uh, here is my environment for today's demo. So I have uh, installed the kubedb and database uh, uh, kubedb operator in, in the kubedb namespace. So kubedb operator has several. Uh, several functionality. This is our provisional operator, and this is our ops manager operator. The provisional operator is mm, responsible for provisioning database instances, and uh, ops manager is responsible for the ops request or day two operation that you are going to um, do by kubedb. So I want to apply the Postgres YML. So uh, this is the YML uh, we are referring to. So let's create a database with that. So we can see uh, a database name demo PG has started provisioning. Uh, the ports are coming, coming up. So the database is now in ready state. I have already exact into the 
the demo poses. So I want to insert some sort of da data in it. So uh, I will create a database first. Create a table with the uh, integer field, uh, do some insert from data. So I have generated series, uh, a series of one to 10,000. 10, so there are so there are uh, 10,000 data in the tab, tab one. Uh, so, so now we are in a standalone instance. Uh, uh, let's say for for some other reason we need to do upgrade to a cluster mode. Uh, let's say for the high availability or let's say for uh, for uh, for maximum uh, scaling capability from a cluster inst instance. So what we want to do is apply a of request. So. Uh, uh, previously, we had a OPS request called a horizontal scaling. It was able to do perform in the horizontal scaling for a cluster mode. For if you had a, uh, previously, you had a cluster of uh, at least three replica. It will allow you to scale up to three, four, five, six, etc. But uh, you could you wouldn't able to scale up from a standalone instance to a cluster mode. But recently, we uh, we had <laughs> able to do. Uh, we have we have able to make this fe feature available for you. So so this is a uh, Postgres <coughs> of request. So uh, I'm naming this is as a cluster, and in the name of, demo name space, and it's type. Uh, I'm saying that it's referring to the horizontal scaling, and here I'm saying the horizontal scaling uh, scaling spec. So I want to move a cluster of three replica, uh, and uh, the here I am referring to a database named Demo PC, which was previously we are we are provisioning the, as a standalone instance. And here is something uh, the streaming mode and standby mode. So Postgres by by default streaming mode is asynchronous and. Uh, stand by default standby mode is warm, so uh, it will do uh, asynchronous uh, asynchronous streaming, and the standby mode will be warm, so you will not be able to read from the replica. So if you want to uh, read from the replica databases, then you have to uh, make sure that you set the standby mode to hot. So now I want to apply this of request to move this in the cluster. So I have applied this. So it's in the progressing state. So what it will do is it will it will move this uh, move this standalone instance to a replica uh, cluster and it will bring up three pods. So let's see, uh, I have a flow diagram from this. So let's see what's happening. So as a user, we have created a PostgreSQL that is provisioned by our uh, provisional operator. Then we have created a horizontal scaling of request that we want to move from a standalone instance to a cluster instance. 
So there is another operator uh, of manager operator which will be responsible for this. So it's what it watches for the any of the CRDs uh, with the Postgres of request. So uh, it will be referred to the PostgreSQL instance. So in this phase, the uh, provisional operator will be post, uh, post. So it will no longer maintain the PostgreSQL object for this time period. And then Ops Manager will update the stateful set. So stateful set will create a backup job. So why we do need to uh, create a backup job? So <clears throat> the reason was uh, uh, previously we have tried to move the standalone instance to a cluster mode, but there is a possible reason to do a data loss for move, when moving to cluster instance, a standalone instance to cluster instance. So what we have did in this of request is if user wants to move standalone to a cluster mode, so it will create a backup job. So it will, uh, what it'll do is it will create a PVC first for the uh, second and the third for and then what it will do is create, uh, take backup, take base backup from the primary PostgreSQL instance, and then we, uh, then it will uh, it will bring up those three ports and will join into the cluster. And after that, uh, it will update the any configuration if necessary, and the provisional op operator will be resumed. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry. I, I had applied the YML without the storage class name. So now it's failing to uh, update the storage class name. I'm really sorry for that. Already created the previous room. I think uh, I could reapply the demo. It will be so long. So here I'm using kind for the demonstration. So kind of has a storage class name standard. I just want to make sure.
Uh, okay, so I have to, uh, I'm provisioning a new instance uh, with name demo PV again. So let's go into the database. So we have a <coughs> new PVC with the storage class name standard. So again, I have uh, generated a series of uh, zero, one, two thousand. So now we can say that uh, in our database, we, uh, we had thousand data. So while we upgrade uh, the request after upgrading, we want to validate uh, the data is persist, persisted. <laughs> So I have the um, I have the host request for that. Um, previously, we have discussed about this. So to, <coughs> now we will try to. So if you if you look here, it's creating a base backup for demo PC one. So if I check for the PVC, so I can see there is a new PVC. It will be taking the base backup from. Demo PC zero. <laughs> so we can see the first backup is completed. And uh, after completing the first backup, the second backup will start. So we can see the second backup also started. Now, if we check for the PVC, so we had uh, another PVC which is which is coming. So the way this request was implemented is point uh, is to uh, is to uh, minimize the data loss issue. Uh, can say prevent the data loss issue. So. Uh, we are taking uh, backup from this PVC to this PVC and uh, this PVC. So, <clears throat> and in the meantime, our demo PVC is running. <clears throat> so you will be able to read or write from these instances. So now all of the PVC's backup has been completed and the backup job also be deleted. Now we had to restart uh, because of we had to uh, we had to join them into the cluster. So, and after I also update the configuration and structural set, etc., regarding to uh, PostgreSQL database. And you can see that in the meantime, the PostgreSQL is in not ready state. So, currently, the PostgreSQL database is in the not ready state. So, you will not be able to uh, read or write or do some sort of operation over this time. So now we can see that our PostgreSQL instance is now coming one by one, and they will be form a PostgreSQL cluster. So we can now see that the PostgreSQL cluster is ready. We have three replicas of this. So I'm I have ex exec into the uh, the demo PC one by another replica one. So we want to see our databases are here. So I have been connected to the test databases. To 
we have created a table called table one. So we can see that our data is persist over the clustering, clustering implementations. So there is a very less downtime of restarting all the pods. And so uh to for today this was all for me uh, all from me and uh, if you guys have any question uh, feel free to unmute yourself i would love to give the answer uh, So uh, I think there is no questions related to this topic. So uh, this concludes uh, our today's webinar. Thank you all for your participation. Hope to see you again next time. And uh, our webinars are actively scheduled on our website. Visit appscot.com slash webinar to register. So have a good day.